Hi there, welcome to this video where I'm going to be redesigning my reflection pool. Now if you're a regular to the channel you might have seen my reflection pool which used to sit in this space here outside my bird hide um, and it's not there anymore because I've had a bit of a problem with it. I think the liner has sprung a leak and so it wasn't holding water properly but I haven't really used it very much recently because it was too low down and the aperture that I used to stick the camera out of was so low to the floor that the only way that I could um, take the photographs was to sit on the floor and as I'm getting older my my knees and my back just can't take sitting on the floor for that amount of time. So I've not actually used the reflection pool for quite a while, so I thought it was about time to think about how I could move it to a different location to make it more comfortable and more usable. So join me in this video, I'm going to rebuild my reflection pool in order to help me to enjoy my photography. I've already dismantled the reflection pool this morning. It used to sit in this spot here. Now I didn't film that because it wouldn't have been very interesting, but I'll show you where we're gonna move it to in this video. So round the back of the shed, which is over there, that is my bird hide, but around the back here is a, a piece of ground that we don't really use for anything. Now in a previous video, somebody did say to me it would be a good idea to use this for taking photographs of birds because it's quite quiet and we've got this hedge right next to where the reflection pool is going to be, end up being. The plan is to put the reflection pool on this old metal table um, that has really gone beyond its best, but the, the base is still useful and it's going to be a lot higher than it used to be, which is what I really want because I've got my pop-up hide that will sit over there somewhere, so it'll be at just the right height for looking across the reflection pool. Now, if you've not seen my original video when I built my reflection pool, I will put a link down below in the description, but basically it was all built from recycled materials, mainly when we took down part of this fence. Um, all of the boards on the bottom were these um, fence boards that are really thick and make for a great base on the bottom, and the legs were these posts that are, were the uprights, but unfortunately I didn't really plan it very well and it was a little bit too low. So lifting it up is going to make it much more usable. So what we're going to do first of all is I'm going to position it correctly because that's really important because once it's full of water we won't be able to move it. What I need to think about first is so that the reflection pool will end up far enough away from the hedge because I want to be able to throw that out of focus so I've got a really good depth of field but it will create a very natural looking background so at the moment where I've just plonked it down it's a little bit close so I'm going to have to move the table um, so it's a little bit further away um, and then the next job will be to start leveling it up. I've moved the structure now to the correct position, but I can already tell that this corner is far too low, so it's gonna to have to be lifted up because this area of ground just here is a little bit lower. And this bit is gonna be quite critical. I need to get this level now and stable to begin with so that when I fill it with water, it comes right to the top and lies completely level with the brim. What I've done is I've gone around all four legs and I've used a spirit level on the top of the reflection pool to make sure it's completely level. Um, I've used the original legs from the first reflection pool um, as bases to spread out the weight so the table doesn't sink into the ground and then just shimmed um, the table up with little bits of slate to get it perfectly level. Now possibly it might sink and settle a little bit because this ground's a little bit soft but I know I'm pretty much on a level basis to start with. So I'm using this thick plastic sheeting as the liner. It's really good because on the roll it's um, doubled over itself three times. So I only need about this much um, cut off the roll 
to unfold and cover the entire length of the table. So the next thing that I'm going to do is staple it on. So as I go around stapling on the liner, what I'm trying to do is make sure that the uh, liner goes into the corners of uh, the void within the table, mainly because I don't want to put any stress on um, the plastic when I put the water in. And if it doesn't go completely into the corners, then it could start to create a little bit of tension. And that's just going to lead to um, damage in the future. At the end of the pond, I've just started attaching the table back again and I've just completely recycled the old one. And what this is useful for is once the stones are piled up here to create some kind of um, effect of a bank or a river bank, then I can place food on here and it will give uh, the birds somewhere to land and feed off this table, but it will be hidden by the stones that are in front. So I've started to think about the display at the end of the pool and what I'm trying to do is create something that looks fairly natural and believable um, but also give the birds access to the water so they can come down for a drink um, but there's places for me to photograph them as well. So I've got a rock here with some moss on it. Now I don't know how long the moss will stay there once it's in the water um, but it's still quite a nice stone anyway. Um, I've dug up a little bit of grass and planted that in an ice cream pot that will just sit in the water so it'll get uh, lots of water and it'll start to develop and what I've also done is I've put some bricks here at the end because that'll lift up the stones um, and they'll just make them go further because I've only got a limited amount so the next job I need to do is I need to give the stones that came out of the old reflection pool a bit of a rinse because they would got quite dirty and there was some leaf matter in there so it'll just freshen them up now the really good thing about this project is it's not cost me any money at all because I'm reusing all the materials that were in the old reflection pool and most of those were recycled anyway in the first place. Um, but these stones were in a desperate need of a clean anyway, even if they kept the reflection pool in its old location, the whole thing needed um, some TLC anyway. So it's a good opportunity to give them a good rinse. Um, I did do this a couple of years ago anyway, just to clean it, but it was really ready again. So that's going to be my job now for the next um, half an hour or so, cleaning all these stones before I put them back at the end for the display. One of the problems I'm facing is the only successful way that I can get all of the leaves out of the stones is to physically pick them out by hand, which is a little bit painstaking um, and it's going to take quite a long while, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. That took quite a long while to wash all of the stones but ultimately I think it was a worthwhile job because I now know they're a lot cleaner and I've got rid of all of the dead leaves and things that had clogged them up so the whole pond is going to be cleaner um, and fresher for the birds to um, drink from and it's just going to be a more pleasant environment. Um, what I've done as you can see is I've now created a sloping beach out of these pebbles that will um, go into the water. I've got this rock here with some moss on and a bit of um, grass to give some greenery to make it feel a little bit natural. Um, from low level you can't see this table where I'm going to put some feed. Um, all that's left now is to put the sides on and then I'm going to fill the pond. The sides that I mentioned are made out of perspex and I've already attached one of them already but they do serve quite an important purpose um, because what I want to happen is if a bird comes in to take a drink I want them to land at the end where the display is. I don't want them perching on the side of the reflection pool to take a drink because I can't take the photograph there so these um, sides will force the birds to the end where the display is and I'll stand a much better chance of getting 
photo, but because they're see-through perspex, um, they won't cast any shadows and the light will be able to get through. So all I need to do now is go around the other side and attach the other piece of perspex on the opposite side. Now it's time for the fun part, filling the pool. In my last reflection pool, I found this product, which is a black dye. And now this goes into the water and it serves two purposes. Firstly, it makes the surface even more mirror-like because the water becomes very, very dark. But also because the water is dark, it also prevents sunlight going into it. So we don't get as much algae building up in the water. Now it's completely harmless to the birds because it's a plant-based uh, derivative that this um, dye comes from. So it's not gonna cause any harm to the environment or the birds, but it just really helps to finish off the reflection pool. So I'm gonna add that now while it's filling up. So there we go, that was a really useful afternoon spent relocating my reflection pool. I now know it's gonna be much more usable because it's a much better height so I can sit uh, in my pop-up hide and take photographs of birds from here much more comfortably. So I'm bound to get much more use out of it. It's in a unused location that wasn't really doing anything but this hedge here behind is going to create a really natural looking backdrop um, so that's great as well and it needed cleaning out and repairing anyway so overall it's been a really really worthwhile job what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some food out on this table here in front of me to get the birds used to feeding from here and then in next week's video I'll show you some photographs that I've taken from the reflection pool so stay tuned tuned for that. If you have enjoyed this video you can do me a really big favour by letting me know down below in the comments or nip over to my Vero account, see lots of my pictures and leave me your comments there as well. Now if you like what I do on the channel or want to help support me to make future content like this you can also visit my Teespring store. There I've got a range of merchandise on offer so head off over there, check what I've got and a purchase really does help me out and it's very much appreciated. And also don't forget the super thanks button as well but you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe and the bell notifications because it really helps me out but it makes sure that you don't miss out on any future content. Watch out for next week's video, that goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, check out this video just up here. But all that's left now is to say, stay safe and I'll see you soon.